Hi folks, welcome to my Fit Record Journal. Uh, today I'm going to be doing uh, something a little different. Um, I guess this is sort of the equivalent of my, uh, the equivalent for me of a retro writing episode. Um, the reason I say equivalent is because, well, you know, m my favorite set of computers, uh, the, the, Q the Sinclair series, the QL, uh, the X81, TS1000, and then of course I just recently got a uh, Spectrum, uh, they're all black, and so they don't really run into uh, this idea of, 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 of fading. Um, I do have some white uh, or light equipment here. In fact, I have one of the uh, first uh, uh, Sinclair Cambridge programmable calculators, and it's actually in pretty good shape, mainly because I keep it in this, um, in this plastic case. But you can see at the top, actually, it does have some whiting, I have some yellowing. And so I may, in the end, uh, in, well, in, I may, in, in a future time, try to figure out a way to uh, retro it. I might try, um, I know that Retro Recipes has um, uh, done a, 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 an episode or two on, on other ways. One he had, he called light brighting or air brighting where he put it in sunlight and it actually undid that, which is a little safer in some ways than trying to add chemicals to that. I have this uh, Mattel game, which is a recreation, and that has been sitting outside for a year or two and it has not done any sort of yellowing or whatsoever. And then I have this old TI uh, 5062 uh, calculator that has a printer on it. And that one definitely has yellowed. You can really see that here that this is the original color and this is the yellowing and so um so that one um but it's a it's not a an heirloom or anything so i, I probably won't ever do anything with that and then of course um, i have my favorite joystick if you look at that on the bottom here you can really see um that it has yellowed so that one may be my candidate for doing some retro brighting it's pretty uh, significant plastic so again, if, if light brighting doesn't work, I might just do, you know, what a lot of the retro YouTubers do, which is add some, um, uh, uh, I forget what uh, substance they use, but you know, they, 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 they either soak it in substance or they, they smear some on, it's like from hair salons, um, and uh, put them out in the sun. So uh, I might try that with that. But um, what I wanted to talk about today is that I, with with black plastic, you run into a different problem. And this, I saw this on um, Noel's Retro Lab. He was um, cleaning up a, a QL, and he actually used some uh, isopropyl alcohol, and it left sort of a whitish streak. And it was interesting because that just had happened to me, but not on the on a computer. Instead, it happened actually. So let me focus in on. Let's see if I can't zoom in on this so this is something that i picked up recently on um free cycle and it's a it's a little pa system with a couple of wireless mics and it, it it looks pretty dirty in this picture um this was actually the listing picture um but it was actually once you cleaned up it, it, it's really almost unused except uh because of the pandemic, I actually didn't clean up with, with water. I, I used a tissue paper and some 90% isopropyl, and it left white streaks, which I was like, oh, maybe I can quickly brush them off. And I tried that with water, with soap, with glass plus, and nothing would would do it. It was literally um, etched into the plastic. And then, of course, I went online and read, uh, I think it was Stack Overflow's chemistry site, about how certain substances will actually interact with the plastic. Now, acetone will actually melt it. Uh, isopropyl, 90% uh, isopropyl, actually will will soften it slightly, and it'll cause the uh, some some chemical reaction that will cause that whitish whiting or smearing. And any sort of washing is not going to get it off. But it turns out that uh, on you know researching this uh, in, on various sites, I discovered. Luckily, <laughs> um, let me unzoom this and bring it back to the uh, where I had it before. Yeah, um, here's good. 
Um, what what saved me is Colgate toothpaste, and this is uh, just the it doesn't have any um, gels in it, in it. It's just just plain white toothpaste, and um, that and a, a toothbrush. And I, what I did is I had to scrub uh, all sides of it. And I had to do like two or three rounds of it. And it actually got rid of it. And then you took a, a towel or something and you sort of polished it for a little bit. And yeah, it, it, it got back to normal. I mean, and you can't even tell that it had uh, that impact. So um, I was able to polish it back out. But so what I wanted to talk about today is I have this sample piece of plastic, which was actually an old... Uh, It was like an old cable box, but it's the kind of plastic that uh, sort of the, the, um, these computers are made out of. So I'm going to try that. Um, I also have this um, uh, uh, 3D printed piece of plastic, but it's very glossy and shiny. And I already experimented with that. And uh, isopropyl alcohol actually doesn't have an impact on that. But um, so I'm going to try it with that particular uh, plastic that's from a, an old cable box. To see what substances are good to clean uh, and whatnot, and you know, I think it's you know for for, for me at least, and I think many other uh, retroers, it's not just the functioning of the machine, but also it's, it's the aesthetics of it. I think there is that's part of the the charm of going back you know 30, 40 years, and the designs you know they're even if you know I'm, I'm not a a Commodore 64 person, but I, I get that people love that bread box look that bread bin look uh, of a Commodore 64. I mean, of, of the Commodore series, I think my favorite design is the Amiga 600, which is actually the, I, I think, RM, uh, RMC Cave, uh, uh, or uh, the, the Cave, I guess. I, he recently changed it from Retro Man Cave to RMC Retro or RMC. Um, did, did a, a thing on the 600 and how he really didn't like it because he, he had a 500. And the 600 was kind of a bad upgrade because it really didn't give you anything extra. Well, I never had an Amiga, so if I wanted to get one, an Amiga 600 would be what I'd want. I like the form factor, nice and small. And again, it has sort of a, a grayish color, which I like. So, that, so the brownish, yellowish bread bins is not my favorite, but I understand um, folks that grew up with that that love it. Uh, and, and the problem with those, obviously, is that they do, they do yellow. Uh, Sinclair products don't, but again, they, they can have other issues. And so um, what, I, what I wanted to talk about before I did that is sort of go uh, and look at, you know, well, what's unique about that? Well, I, let me make some room here and move these out of the way. I can move the calculator out of the way. And this out of the way. And so I have a, a bunch of laptops of various degree of age. So one of the ones that I have that I actually don't use very much is this IBM ThinkPad. And it's probably, see if I can move this stuff out. It's probably, well, <laughs> it's probably um, 15 years old maybe. I mean, it can run Windows 7. So it's not that old. And you can see it's, 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 it's a black, but it's not, you know, this part comes closest to the QL and the Spectrum and behind here the ZX81 style plastic. Uh, the keys, however, you know, it's a diff seems like it's a different kind of plastic. And then worse even is that the top has sort of a, a, a coating on there that kind of fades off and, and in other cases can get very gummy. So, yeah, I, I actually don't like this kind of plastic. Now, I have an older 1994. Five IBM ThinkPad. It's very square, little brick almost, and that plastic is much more reminiscent to the 1984 QL. So again, within that same 10-year span, even though they started creating laptops, the plastic was still kind of interesting. Whereas you know modern plastics, even the the monitor has a kind of a shiny plastic that I don't really like. And so yeah, this is I'm not a fan. I'm a fan of black computers, but I'm not a fan of the plastic that they use. And I think part of the problem is is that they mix and match plastics. And I have this other one here, which every time I look at it, I think it's brown, but it's actually black. <laughs> and that's this Toshiba uh, Portage, which is actually a, um, uh, it's top here. It's got two different plastics, which again, I also don't like. And this is, yet 
this is more of a rough plastic, more of a smooth plastic, but I don't think there's a coating on here. And of course, then they have the silver painted plastic. And if you open this up, uh, yeah, so this isn't bad, but I don't really like this um, silvery part. The keys, again, look almost like a different color. And then, so it's, it's sort of a, a lighter black, I guess. I don't know, there's just something about this whenever I look at it. I'm like, it's a useful computer, especially because it's, um, uh, it's a touch tablet, so you can write on it. So these are actually thought after. I, I, I had a, a friend that really wanted this saying, oh, you have a Portage. I used to think it said Protege, but it's actually Portage. So. Um, and again, this I, I got Windows 7 running on, no, XP running on this, although I have gotten Windows 7 to run on this. So this is another computer that, um, uh, you know, uh, probably early 2000s, um, 2003, 2004, but not a, a fan of its plastic. And then I, this is actually one of my favorite old computers, not because of its um, look. I mean, part of what I like about this, this is a, a Dell Inspiron um, uh, 8600. Uh, and it's completely painted plastic, so it's all silvery and this one actually, I, I, I had, uh, I found a second one, and um, which I think it was an 8500. They're almost identical, and I took the top off because the one I had was very much used. And min when you put your palm on here, this thing just starts wearing out. And I had one that wasn't working but had a nice top, so I, I replaced the top. And I think I even moved the stickers because uh, the other one wasn't running a Pentium M; it was running, uh, I think what it was running. But um, yeah, and this can run Windows 7. And, and, and if you're a fan of Stargate Atlantis, which I was, they used these as their uh, computers in Stargate at the time. It was kind of funny. But um, I think they put a, a different sticker right here. But what I like about this computer uh, more than just it's, well, I don't really, the look is okay, is that um, the, the back of it, Let's see if I can't, uh, Oh, it's too heavy. Sorry. I guess I can try to do it like this. Let's not let's not break anything while I'm showing you. But um, you can see that it has a parallel port, a serial port, VGA. It's got um, a PS2, and it has uh, yeah. So it has VGA, PS2. Uh, I, I have another one um, at school that is a uh, Inspiron 1510, I think. And uh, I specifically bought that as an upgrade uh, because it was the only computer out there that had um, all the video options, which was VGA, P, uh, um, it's basically the composite, I forget what it's called, it's not PS2, but uh, the, the, um, the video composite, I'll put it in a note, I'm having a brain freeze right now. And then it also had HDMI, so it all, had all three, which I really liked. And then my current computer that I use, laptop I should say, is uh, this beast. And it's almost the antithesis of the Dell Inspiring because it has, you know, it has USB ports and specialized Mac ports. Um, and it has it has very little in terms of uh, which it opens this way. It has very little in terms of you know old school ports that you can play with. It just has new ones, and this is not even that new machine. I think it's two thousand and eleven. Um, but it has. I think this is plastic, uh, but this is metal. Um, and so again, silver, either metal or plastic. Uh, and, and, and the funny thing about this is I actually had this all scuffed up and I thought that I had ruined it. And as it turns out, because I, I, I put this in a um, in a very small case and I put the, the uh, this top on it and it actually just kind of smeared and plastic came off of here and left streaks in here. So for a, a couple of years, I actually had this looking really horrible. And so one day I used... Uh, um, I might have used, um, I think I used uh, like Lysol and it came off and I'm like, wow, because I knew this was metal, so it wasn't going to interact with that. So again, modern cases now have gone to sort of this metal, uh, which is interesting as well. In any case, uh, and of course my, uh, no pun intended, in any case, and of course you can see the edge of my uh, iMac is also metal, right? 
right there in the middle. But um, so I really like the um, the the plastics that they used back in in the day, and so uh, uh, and I want and of course we want to protect those plastics. So what I want to do um, and and you know don't mind the metal cases as much, but um, other than my affinity for an old Dell that has um, uh, uh, lots of expansion ports. I don't actually necessarily like the way it looks with its silver paintedness. I, I like, yeah, uh, sort of this, this black look. What I want to do uh, next is I have um, this piece of plastic. It's an old RCA video tuner. It's one of these things we got for free when we switched in the U.S. from analog to digital. And this one broke, so I got another one. A uh, different one that had a built-in DVR. Uh, but yeah, so I want to uh, try some. Um, so I'm going to use, you can kind of tell that the inside is a little glossier than the outside. So I'm going to use this surface right here. And I'm going to try different products uh, on this. And so what products am I going to try? Well, I have a list of them right here. So let me see if I can't move the camera. So you can see what I'm going to try today. They're on the floor, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this or not. All right, here we go. So a list of products I've got. Uh, maybe I can zoom in a little bit. Um, I've got uh, isopropyl 90%, isopropyl 50%. I don't have the 70% one, but, uh, but I'll try both of those. I've got Gugon, two glass plus cleaners. That's actually mineral spirits. That is a... a, 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 a a professional cleaner that I got a little bit of. It's, it's sort of, I think it's similar to Gugon. It's sort of orangish. WD-40, I've got that Armor All um, Rejuvenator. So that's actually not a cleaner, so I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use that to, uh, to see if I can. Uh, I've got a little bit of Naval Jelly. I've got Ammonia, Comet. This is like a disinfectant like Lysol. And I also have um, a baking soda. So those are the ones I'm going to uh, try, um, ex again, except for the Armor All, which is just a refinisher on this plastic surface uh, for this thing right here. So um, I'm going to use a um, cotton swab and then try the different variations to see if uh, uh, that has an impact and to see what uh, uh, the ramifications are. So um, let me try first with um, the IPA. Now I'm not going to go through each one of them. I, I, this is the one I think the 90% is, is going to cause problems. So I'm going to start with that one first, and then I'll I'll, I'll probably fast forward in the video. Uh, but um, so if I use this, uh, let's focus in on that. And if I I'm going to just use a little bit of. So this is the 90%. You can see it's, uh, you can kind of see on the cotton swab that uh, it's having an impact. Yeah, and you can see really that it's it's taking, and again, I, I washed the, um, I washed the plastic before I did this. And so this is obviously leaving, uh, it's taking something off of the plastic and it's leaving fill. Now, can I buff this out? Let me uh, just, Well, I can, but it definitely has changed the properties of that. So that's not a good sign. So again, uh, isopropyl, 90% at least, uh, is, is an issue. So let me try a different one. Let me try the 50% one to see if um, that does any better. So I'm going to use a new cotton swab. So this was my cotton swab for 90%. And so let's use 50% to see. Um, so 50% is basically half and half water and uh, let's see what that does on plastic um, and again the reason you use isopropyl is to try to get uh, uh, you know glue stickies off so I'm going to try that on this corner next right here all right and so scrub it good And uh, yeah, keep scrubbing it. And 
And, uh, you know, it's actually, there's a little bit of, um, but not very much at all. So the, and this, let me just buff it off now. See what this gives you. And, uh, you know, if I, I, I don't think it harmed it at all. There's literally, it didn't take anything off. I know there's a little bit, but I, I, I rinsed it with water, so I didn't scrub it with, with like soap, because the whole point is. So yeah, no, this is actually, so 50% did not impact it. So if you can use 50%, um, even though there's a little bit of uh, browning on here, which could have been any remnant dirt on here, that, that the, the rinse that I gave it, um, I, I, maybe I used a little bit of hand soap, but not anything ridiculous. I didn't scrub it with a, with a, um, with a toothbrush. So uh, let's try something else. Let's try um, Google. So that stuff is the orangey stuff that is really good at removing uh, uh, stickers. So I highly recommend that. I know that the 8-bit guy uses WD-40, which I'll use next. But let's try Goo Gone. And uh, I'll try it on the spot over just to... Uh, so I'll, I'll try it on, uh, right here. So Goo Gone does leave a, a, an oily film. So I'm going to have to use a paper towel to try to... Uh, Yeah, so, and you can see that, again, just like the, um, sorry, just like the the 50%, is, there's a little bit of uh, blackish, blacking on the Q-tip, but again, this could be dirt. Yeah, so let me um, get a paper towel and then see if I can, so I don't think the, the, the back of the Q-tip is going to do anything here, so I'm just going to get a paper towel and just kind of wipe it off. wet it a little bit and uh, nope that did not impact the plastic at all yeah it good so so that's good because Google is such a great product for removing uh, um, for removing um, sticky stuff so the uh, next one I wanted to use was uh, uh, well let's use a little bit of WD-40 because that is something that uh, the 8-bit guy says is really good for removing stickies I don't think that's going to have an impact because it's oil, but let's try this scientifically. Let's see if I can't avoid making a mess. There we go. So I've got a little bit out on the tip. And uh, again, focusing in on this, I'm going to just move over here. Do we have it? Uh, yeah, it's right here. So I just don't have enough on here that I had on the other one. Let me do that a little bit more. Here we go. Now it's soaked. So again, bringing this into focus. Scrubbing this. Again, it's leaving a little bit of that uh, remnant of that, but I don't think it's taking anything off. So now let me actually wipe this off. I'm wiping up so that I don't, a um, little bit of moisture. And uh, no, I don't think it's impacted the plastic at all. So WD-40 and Goo Gone and 50% IPA are good things to use. Let's try something else. Um, so I'm going to try. Uh, I'm going to try the back of the. Uh, so to save myself on Q-tips, since I'm going to use, I'm going to use the back that's unused. I'm going to use this um, this professional cleaner. It's called Soy and Orange Environ Natural Press Combo uh, Enviro Environ Whiff. I'll put it in the link. Um, but it smells orangey, just like usual, and it. It's got a little stronger smell than Goo Gone. Um, let's try that. So this is the next part. Yeah, just like Goo Gone, it's very oily. Uh, 
Oh, it is taking more off though, so this is a little harsher. This might actually... Yeah, so this, you can see that uh, so the telltale sign is in the... Um, you know, when the Q-tip starts uh, taking black off, that becomes problematic. So um, let's take my napkin and see what see what is left. So this is the... So I'm going to just wipe it off. Yep, and so that industrial strength cleaner de definitely did harm it. Similar to the 90% IPA, so not so good. Good to know that. It's good to know for other things. Um, I'm going to guess that mineral spirits is going to harm it. So if I take the... Um, this was the Q-tip for uh, uh, WD-40. I'm going to use the other side to do um, mineral spirits just because I have it here. And I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen with that. It's not going to go well. All right, so our plastic, the up part up here is, has not been uh, harmed too much, so I'm gonna use it here. Well, no, mineral spirits is actually, uh, it's like a paint thinner. I don't have acetone, but, uh, again, very light. Uh, see that and it's a it's a very light um, q-tip so see if we can... right so yeah I don't think it did any harm so let me uh, do the old wipe off that's surprising I would have thought that mineral spirits nope it did not impact the plus uh I mean, if it did ever so slightly, I can see a little bit of a difference. It's hard. I mean, not something that you would worry about. Uh, so, you know, but definitely not like these two, IPA and uh, that, that cleaner. Um, the next thing I want to try is ammonia. And again, I'm, I'm not doing bleach because I do know that ammonia and bleach mixed together is a bad thing. Um, so I'm going to do ammonia. Uh, this is um, lemon scented ammonia, but you know, basically ammonia. Let's see what, that's a very strong smell. Let's see what this does. So let's find a new area here. Yeah, no, once it's gotten, I, I don't think mineral spirits did anything. So I'm going to do this bottom part right here. Are we ready? Again, I'm, I am applying pressure. So I'm not being light on it because, you know, I'm, I'm sort of pretending that I'm trying to get rid of glue. Oh, nothing at all. Absolutely nothing at all. That's nice. All right. So I don't think ammonia. So ammonia is safe. Oh, sorry, I cleaned it off camera. But ammonia is absolutely safe. It had no impact whatsoever. So that's good. All right. So um, and I apologize if I keep going back and forth on the... Uh, um, focus. Uh, so the other thing I want to try is, is Lysol disinfectant spray because I know that can get stuff. Uh, so let's try that. Can you hear me shake it and spray it? There we go. Got it nice and soaked. No, I don't want to destroy my wood floor. That would be bad. <laughs> um, all right. We're going to go back here. I do have a spot. I'm going to do it right here. All right. So here we go. Nope. And I like Lysol. That actually will get rid of uh, glue. Now, I'm not being very scientific in terms of uh, uh, reading the ingredients, and perhaps some of them share the common ingredient. I'm sure any chemist out there can just tell me exactly why this thing broke uh, the plastic and why. Yeah, so this is, has very little impact. And again, I'm, I'm pressing down deep, but uh, I don't see this having an impact. So good. No impact on that plastic. And again, let me let me just wipe these. And 
because there is a lot of leftover stuff. But when 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 it comes back, what you can see is that there's it's definitely two tones. It there's a it it it, it wiped off part of the it's it's not whiting like it did for my sound system, but it definitely has changed the scope of it. Um, and uh, Comet is a cleaner that. You use with water, so it's probably common. And Ajax is the same thing. Uh, this one has been used on both sides, so I'm gonna get a new Q-tip. So I've got Comet in my hand. I've got, I've wetted this, and so now let's find a new spot here. I'm gonna go right under here. Comet is good actually to use on wood. I don't know. It, it, it's not supposed to be abrasive, but it looks like it's definitely taking stuff off. So, yeah, so it, it seems like let's do a little bit more. I have, well, I have no idea how this comes out, but. Yeah, so Comet definitely, um, it's ever so subtle, but if I can get it right, you can see that um, it definitely impacted, uh, you can see there's a, a more shiny spot. So I think it's just polishing the, um, the uh, it, it's sort of uh, polishing it a little bit. So it does, does have an impact. So Comet is um, not recommended for your retro gear. <laughs> um, what do I have left? Oh, I have Glass Plus. And these are both, I think, similar, so I'll only try one of them. Uh, one is just Glass Plus, and the other one is a... Uh, and it's supposed to be good and safe, so let's try Glass Plus. And again, I'm going to try it right next to it. Yeah, it's having no... So the glass cleaner, glass plus, uh, I'm using the generic uh, method glass plus surface, which is just, uh, it's, it, it's not having an impact on the, uh, let me wipe it off. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know how good glass plus cleaners are. Uh, I'll use the other. Um, I do know that uh, you, you, I've seen Adrian's Digital Basement use um, uh, navel jelly to get rid of uh, um, to get rid of some of the uh, corrosion, and so it's okay on motherboards. But what about if you get it accidentally on your? Now I know, having used this on cars for rust, that navel jelly will impact paint. So be very careful when you use it. But yeah, I'm curious to see what it does. So I'm gonna do it on the corner right here, navel jelly. So it does have a corrosive or anti-corrosive effect on, on rust and other things, but I'm curious to see. I don't think it's gonna impact plastic. All right, good. Yeah, I don't think it's doing anything. Um, like not not as scientific because I'm only using the products that I have. Like I wish I would I had yeah I didn't do anything. I wish I had seventy percent IPA because that would be interesting. The final thing I'm going to use now I have um I'm, I'm not even going to try this. I have soap, and obviously soap is going to be safe on that. Um so uh, I just put it out there. But I have um uh, Arm and Hammer. So I've I've, I've wetted the tip. And now I'm going to um, I'll do this in the corner. I've also wetted the, the surface here, and I'm going to just use. I don't think this is going to have any impact whatsoever. Oh, it does. Look at that. Uh, I don't know if it's because it's abrasive or not, but it is actually taking stuff off. You can see the, yep, so arm it. So it's surprising that some of these formulas. Yeah, so this is almost acting like Comet. Um, and if I.
Oh, it's interesting because I actually, yeah, no, I can see a very slight, very slight. I mean, maybe if I continue do, doing this, but obviously if it's a, uh, Yeah, it's definitely blacking it. Uh, it it's it, it's much more slightly than I don't know if you can see that in the light. It's very slight. It's it's almost like it it's okay. I mean, when I see it taking black off, I worry, but it's it's ever so slight. Okay, so those were the substances that we used to um, try to remove dirt or especially um, uh, material uh, from the uh, surface and as I said um, the um, 550 percent IPA was okay goo gone was okay mineral spirits was okay um, uh, Lysol was okay glass plus was okay everything else and 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 um, ammonia was okay uh, I, well I think ammonia did a little bit but comet so that I think the ammonia was in the corner I think ammonia did a, uh, I forget definitely IPA uh, this was the, the cleaner that was Comet that was uh, uh, baking soda and I thought no I, I don't think uh, I don't think ammonia did anything uh, but now I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to see if I can restore some of this so I have this arm and hammer so let's say you made the mistake so I'm gonna try the uh, this portion up here to see if I can restore that so I'm gonna get out of here out of camera view so what I've done is I've uh, so that's the stuff that I've squirted on here so now I'm just gonna all right so I think I put too much on here but I think you're supposed to let it sit so I'm gonna let it sit and what I'm going to do also, in, uh, uh, as I'm letting this sort of soak in, and uh, I think I put way too much on here. <laughs> uh, so you can kind of see that it's become this big glob. Yeah, so I'm trying to get rid of... I, I don't need the other hand, end of it, so I'm going to use the other end. So um, I'm, uh, I'm going to let this sit uh, uh, and soak in. And what I'm going to do with this bottom part is I'm going to use... Uh, toothpaste and scrub it so let me show you that as I'm letting it sit so I'm going to use um, a little dab of toothpaste um, on this part I'm just going to put toothpaste on here and then I'm going to scrub it and I have a, a little bit of water here so Try to keep these separate. And uh, let me use a bit more toothpaste. And so this is gonna, uh, I think I'm gonna require, we'll see how many uh, uh, rounds I require, but because I need to let the armor all sit for a little bit, uh, I think what I'm gonna do is, I don't think I'm gonna do this all on live video, so I'm gonna scrub this. And uh, I'll do one round on live video, and then I think I, what I remembered last time is, to sort of restore this is you had to do a few rounds. So let's see how this goes. So let's see what this looks like after I, so I'm, I'm going to avoid cleaning off the armor all, but I'm just gonna clean off this part. I need a new napkin. <laughs> Get a little dirty. So, um, it's still visible. Uh, and I, uh, like I said, I'm gonna leave these alone, but I think these are gonna be much easier to, to, to bring back to the norm. But it does, has impacted it. So I'm going to do a few more rounds of this and I'm gonna let this sit for a while and I'm gonna come back maybe in 10 minutes and show you the results. So maybe uh, two or three more scrubbings with uh, toothpaste 
and let this sit and see which one can restore the plastic better. I'm not going to try to restore these since they're not as bad. If I can get anything back here, then likely I can get rid of it. Like, I, I know that toothpaste works, um, and so I recommend that. I don't know if Armor All works or not, but I know I can get this out with toothpaste. Uh, in fact, I'll scrub both of these with toothpaste and, and, and see if we can get this almost back to normal and see how close I can get this. And then eventually I'll clean that up. So I'll come back. All right, I'm back. And uh, so um, the results. Um, I let this top portion sit for about five minutes or so, wiped it off. It had really very little impact with Armor All. Now, Noel from Noel Retrolab had something different, and so that might restore that. But you can see here I did like three or four rounds of scrubbing with a toothbrush and then um, uh, sort of buffing it with a, with a, with a t cleaning it off and then buffing it with a, a uh, like a paper towel. And that actually did a really good job. You can still see there's remnants of this here. Uh, I think what, what um, the toothpaste does, and again, the toothpaste, the, the, the kind you want to use is the kind that's actually uh, clear. It doesn't have gels in them. But so I think what the toothpaste does is sort of soft, it sort of soft sands it and kind of gets it back to, to, uh, blend in and so i think that's what you can do so if you if you screw up uh, on the uh uh and, and clean your plastic your, your retro plastic with something that uh, you know leaves marks uh toothpaste uh, uh and a toothbrush and some elbow grease we'll, we'll get it back to normal um and, and again that kind of stuff works on cars with with their lights as well and so that's not that's not a bad technique uh, as i said uh, we 50 percent ip works 70 percent seems to 90 cents seems to destroy it i do have some 70 percent at uh, work so I'll, I'll try that and put it in the comments and but Gugon I think is is Gugon and uh, as the APID guy said WD-40 are the best but yeah if you get Gugon that's what it's designed for it's not uh, as bad as that chemical cleaner that I used that was uh, the um, uh, it's called soy and orange environment WIP I think that one's pretty harmful so in any case uh, so that's all I have today and I just wanted to uh, um, give you sort of an idea of how to clean your retro equipment and keep it safe. Um, and if you have any comments to let me know what, what you use, uh, put them in below. But uh, uh, I'll see you next week. I've got some cool videos coming up for December and the holidays. So um, thanks for see, uh, watching today and stay safe.